Hello everyone again welcome to this uh, session. Today we will be talking about uh, we will be continuing our discussion on the Linux. Uh, still the Linux basics uh, this is lecture 2. Um, before I start the lecture I want to recap uh, give you a little bit of recap as uh, what we have done in the past uh, lecture. Um, so we covered the history of Linux and Unix uh, mainly it has about uh, 50 years of history uh, at this point uh, started somewhere uh, in 1960s uh, Unix uh, uh, people started working on Unix uh, with the mini computers then uh, around 1991 the Linux came into being um, the main person uh, who invented Linux is uh, Linus Torvalds. Um, we also looked at why Unix um, is very popular operating system and then why is uh, Linux a popular operating system. The main reason why Unix is popular is because um, Unix provides excellent uh, security features um, and it also allows multi user, multitasking, and multi CPU or multi processor capabilities. Um, we actually saw and we defined all those terms what it means um, and then Linux actually um, provides uh, more features on top of that uh, uh, first of all Linux is an open system so you get the source code along with the Linux uh, operating system and then um, we also saw uh, uh, how it also has um, very solid uh, verification features. Uh, it is uh, globally verified so to speak uh, because there are so many users using Linux and um, going through all the programs uh, all the features of Linux uh, uh, verifying them every day. So more than 30 years of uh, verification experience in Linux uh, and then it is an open platform and um, uh, companies also use some of the commercial aspects of it. Uh, uh, and then we also saw the main parts of Linux operating system the kernel the shell and the file system uh, we defined each one of them as to how they interact with the user um, as we saw the kernel is the lowest level which mainly like it provides the interface uh, to the hardware systems. So it uh, manages the resources hardware resources uh, various uh, units and then also the memory and IO all those different uh, parts are managed the shell actually sits on top of the kernel um, and then that provides the interface power from the user uh, to the hardware. Um, so in, in between all these things is the file system which is essentially uh, we also define what the file system is how the files are structured in, inside the Linux operating system and one key thing that we noticed was um, all the devices are represented as files. So if you want to actually put something in the at the terminal, we simply write to a file. And if you want to read from a keyboard, we simply read a file. So that facilitates all kinds of interaction much more easily compared to say even Windows operating system where you have to actually start um, a process um, and then basically use the process to communicate um, to your IO devices. We also uh, saw how to use the shell, um, the what exactly a shell is, um, which is essentially a command interpreter. Um, so basically, it's a, when you invoke a shell, it comes up with a, a prompt. The prompt could be shaped like a dollar percentage, a greater than sign, things like that, and each one represents various shell. And we saw a couple of uh, shells uh, like uh, the the Berkeley C shell, the Bond shell, or the BSH, and then the Bond again shell, which is the BASH or Bash. Uh, the Berkeley C shell is also uh, nowadays it's called the TC shell. Which provides additional capabilities on top of the original uh, Berkeley shell. Um, then we got some basic introduction into the commands. Um, 
the commands like uh, ls uh, ls is the list command um, we also um, saw the command structure inside the Linux operating system which is command followed by options followed by arguments uh, and then we saw like a couple of commands ls and cd uh, ls is the list command which lists um, all the files in a given directory and then we saw like various options ls minus x ls minus l ls minus a ls minus t ls minus r various options that we saw um, and then also like on cd cd is the change directory which um, allows us to go from one directory to another and this is essentially by um, um, again it has uh, many options um, and also like uh, arguments it needs uh, uh, one argument minimum which is uh, um, well, I, I wouldn't say like it needs one argument. Minimum. It, it, you can also like uh, give it no arguments, and you see like uh, I mean I, I want you to see what happens when you do just a CD with no arguments. Where does it go? Where where, where does it take you? Um, try that experiment. It's very it's a, just a fun experiment. Uh, otherwise, you need one argument, which is uh, the destination directory. So if you don't specify any destination, what happens? So that's uh, something that uh, you can do uh, when you get to play with on the uh, Linux platform. So I also have a couple of activities for you based on the lecture one. Uh, this is something that you can try it out uh, when you get a chance to play on the Linux platform. Um, number one is uh, you can type man. Uh, we also saw this man command, which is a manual. To get details about any of the commands, uh, so man bash bash is uh, as you know is the shell. See what happens whether it is man bash and uh, the man pcsh. Um, these are two shells, so you can get more information about the shell, how to move the shell, what are the options. Um, again, the shell also follows the very similar uh, command rules. Uh, that we talk, we know about already, which is uh, followed by the options and then the arguments. So try it out, see what happens. Uh, I also ask you to do this other activity, which is uh, you have a file structure, which is uh, you know the slash represents the root, and then there is a b. Uh, there's a directory A, and then under the directory A, you have B and C, and then uh, under root, you have also another directory called B. Under that, you have a directory E. So, I want you to write uh, two CD commands to go from B to E. Um, basically, uh, one will be an absolute command, the other one is a relative command. Relative command means using where you are and then where you want to go that is the relative command and then the absolute command is just follow from the root whatever this absolute path so try it out I think it's a it's a fun exercise it just gives you some more um, understanding of how the CD command works um, so with that we will start uh, today's lecture um, Today I'm going to cover more of the commands themselves. Uh, we will look at various commands and uh, see um, how we can make use of them. Um, so I'm going to start from where we left off. This is the the last. Um, I just wanted to again reinforce on the CD command. Couple of things uh, we didn't talk about uh, some of the stuff. We talked about the tilde uh, tilde to represent the home directory. Um, you can also um, type cd slash home slash, which takes us to the the slash home, which may not be your home directory. Your home may be like slash home slash or your username. In this case, let's say like uh, AACPER is the username, so it goes there. Now you can also type in like uh, from the home 
CD, C, K, C, C, P, E, R, and that takes you to the the next level. And then from there, like I mean, we know that the dot dot actually moves back one level up. So if you do a CD dot dot, it takes us back to the slash home. Um, and then um, if you do like CD dot dot slash dot dot from the home from your uh, A C P R, then it takes you to the root directory. So you can see like I mean how to navigate and now you can go from one directory to another and as I said like the if you just do the previous exercise uh, that will give you like a good grounding as to how to navigate uh, using the CD command. Now let us move on the next command that we are going to talk about is the MKDIR or in short we just say make the so make the command allows us to create new directories and the new directories um, can be created uh, under the current directory or if you give like an absolute path it will also create wherever you, you want it uh, to be created. Um, so here essentially the syntax is make the followed by the directory name so again here make there is the command and uh, the directory name is the argument uh, you can also use certain option um, for example the dash p this will create the directory tree directory the, the tree um, essentially like I mean it, it, it creates this whole tree which is there one followed by the two followed by the three meaning um, the there one is the top level under that you have the the two and then under that you have the two and then uh, you can also do uh, make the the five which is we are just creating a new directory called the five and then we say cd pound dollar so the pound dollar has a meaning um here the pound dollar means the argument the last argument of the previous command so anytime you start with a bank um, it has um, it basically like the bank denotes uh, the command so um, we, we will see some of the shortcuts actually like in, in, in the later stage or even like I, I will I will uh, tell some of the shortcuts uh, as we go along but uh, this bang followed by the dollar uh, the dollar denotes the last argument from the previous command so when we say like cd um, bang dollar that bang dollar is a shortcut for their file so um, when you say like cd bang dollar basically it moves from the moves the cursor from the current directory to their file because we already created the their file this is a very very uh, useful shortcut um, I think like I mean many of us uh, use this uh, pretty often um, the other shortcut is also like bang bang um, if you do the bang bang that that is shortcut for the previous uh, command and then you can also say like bang however like I mean put an negative integer and that takes you back so many levels of command. For example, bang minus two is the uh, command that got executed um, prior to the previous command. So, so bang minus one is the same as bang one. And then uh, similarly, like you can go progressively behind how many ever commands that are there. And we we will see some more uh, commands which uh, allows you to uh, get these kind of shortcuts, and then um, you can uh, do this. Uh, kind of navigation so the next one that um, we will talk about is uh, the use of uh, semicolon semicolon is uh, usually a command separator um, so this allows us to actually concatenate multiple commands in a single line so in this one for example uh, you can say make the der 5 semicolon then cd to der 5 uh, there is no period actually so once you do that for example it is shown here um, it creates the directory and then moves 
the cursor to that directory. So now you can see the prompt actually which is here it is actually this greater than sign that is actually now in this root slash the two. So um, and then here also like I mean uh, we already learned about this the CD minus which is essentially going back to the previous command or previous directory where it came from this is not that it is going up one level but whichever directory that was there previously for example I can say like uh, I am in the I can be in like root slash say like the one and then already if I had created a under under the root there is a root dot uh, root slash the two um, and then if I say like for example cd to slash root slash the two from the one and then if I say cd minus it actually takes me back to the one and not to slash root so this is the important distinction that I want you to keep in mind. Um, um, something that you not notice in this particular even window is uh, you can see on the shelves um, on these uh, uh, in this particular window with various tabs, so you can actually click and go to this uh, thing. Again, this is all like the features of the multitasking uh, that we already know about uh, when we learned uh, in the beginning of lecture. Um, so now um, the next. Uh, Command that we will learn is uh, cat. Cat is the short form for catenate or catenation. Um, essentially, like I mean, when you say cat and uh, the argument is a file name, once you give the file name, the the command interpreter just opens that file and displays each line and uh, until the end of the line, and then it brings puts it back puts the prompt back so this is like I mean you cannot do any edit or anything but it only like displays the content of the file so for example like I mean there is this text file aacper dot text that we have and when you say like cat aacper it just scrolls through that all the lines and it displays line by line so it's real as any design verification you know, for very log system very log um, all these VMM OVM and uh, another OVM or UEM actually so all these are displayed and then uh, and then even there is an empty line in this file uh, if you notice at the end and then uh, it brings back to the prompt. So this is again another useful command uh, to see what is inside a particular uh, file. So now the question is how do we use it I mean just by displaying a file through like I mean through all the lines does not seem that useful correct. But uh, there are many ways that we can use it. For example, you can uh, copy a file into another file, and that you can use a, just a cat command to do it. So how do we do it? Let's look at that. So here, there is a special character, another character, which is the the greater than sign. So when we say like cat to a file. So in this one actually like I mean we can keep typing whatever we type in that goes into this uh, file called fly1 um, and then when we do the control D it comes back. So this is one way to enter um, or edit a file not really like um, useful in the sense that we cannot go back and change things around or move things around. Uh, this is like just line by line we just uh, input so say like I mean if you want to type in like some some notes into just a file you can just do this uh, cat and redirect to a file and then just start typing your notes and then it will just create that uh, notes um, it is uh, useful in some sense basically I mean you can also say like I mean in fact uh, cat file one 
and then redirect to file 2 that actually lets you um, copy that file. So you will now have two files file 1 and file 2 both have the same information. So um, this is the this is where I am actually you are using two things one is the, the cat command also the redirection operator which is the greater than sign. So in this case um, when you say like one greater than sign it creates this new file and uh, essentially like I mean write into that file and if the file 1 is our fly 1 is already there then uh, it will not uh, usually write into that it will say um, that uh, hey this file is there I cannot overwrite it in some shells it, it also allows the, the writing of the content so here actually if the file 1 is already exist then it uh, overrides the content of file 1 um, it is true um, but sometimes some shells actually they can, uh, will not uh, do that and then it comes back with an error. So it depends on like uh, the kind of shells that you are using but uh, you can again this is one of the features of uh, Linux which is the customization that we already talked about. So now let us uh, let us see like I mean how we can uh, use this one. So the next slide actually it, uh, it gives you an example of where it is getting overwritten. So here we displayed initially the cat uh, cat word or text that displays the content this we already saw. But now when we do the cat greater than cat word or text and then we start typing the success is not a destination and then we do a control D and then now when we issue the same cat command the previous command we see actually that file has changed and we get only this again try try this out try uh, various combinations of this and uh, I think uh, you will understand it better uh, that way. Now let us um, go to the next one which is a uh, little bit more interesting which is uh, double greater than so it is uh, two arrows. Uh, you can see here what does this do this actually um, is slightly different than a single arrow uh, this the two greater than signs actually lets you to append to a file what that means is um, the fly one in the previous example um, saw that um, it contained all these things now if you say cat two greater than and then say cat or text and then when you type in the success is not a destination on control D it will contain all these things and the next line after this empty line will be this one. So that is the big difference between the single greater than and the two greater than. So again uh, why how how can you use it so here there is uh, one way to use it which is fly 1 cat fly 1 file 2 and then you are saying greater than file 2 what happens in to this one this actually concatenates both these files and writes it into the file 2 now the question is uh, how do you append fly 1 into file 2 the simple thing is like eliminate this file 3 and then you can say cat fly 1 double arrow file 2 and then whatever the content in file 2 will be uh, will have fly 1 appended to it at the end. So if you want the reverse one like uh, file 2 to go to go after the file fly 1 then you need to reverse the order say so like cat file 2 append to fly 1 and then that, that gets appended to it. So again uh, another um, fun command to play with. Uh, I encourage you to actually uh, try this out and uh, try it out multiple times and various combinations to just understand how this uh, command works.
so here is uh, an example um, again we first typed in whatever the character.txt has said this is not a destination and then followed by control D to break the command now the next one is cat and two arrows and character.txt and then it is a progressive journey and then now when you do the cat character.txt we get those two lines that we enter so this is another way to enter um, a data into a file but you know still we are we know like now how to create a file how to actually um, you know work with the file but it is still not very clear as to how we can write some programs and how to navigate through a file we will uh, talk about some of the commands um, later on in this course uh, but let us let us go, go on with uh, this knowledge now the next one is now we know that uh, how to copy using the cat but Linux also supports a regular copy function which is uh, the command is cp and cp also has again a number of uh, options but it has two main arguments the source file and the destination file so if we without any options we say cp file 1 file 2 it copies the content of file 1 into the content of file into into file 2 so this is another this is a very useful command we use this a lot of uh, times actually in the real life uh, and the Linux also allows you to actually copy um, many files to a destination um, you can also specify a directory here instead of the file and then it will create the file one exact copy of a file one and call it also as file one under this particular directory so here we can say um, cp minus prf so again all these things are having a meaning um, and then uh, we'll we'll see what what they mean and then uh, it takes this uh, the files and directories and subdirectories from this uh, catper area home catper into the HTTP backup area and it creates exactly like all the files into that so here you, you see that actually it is not the arguments are not the files but in, instead they are the directories so that is why like I mean it is left as, as vaguely as, uh, as it is here yeah, the source and destination the source could be a file name or a directory destination could be a file name or a directory when they are directories then you need some options to make sure that which files are getting copied and even like in source you can use uh, wild cards which is something we will learn uh, for example the star denotes uh, star um, denotes um, all the possible files and then you can also like filter them by specific characters and uh, names so now let us uh, look at why we specify these uh, options the P R and F what do they mean so here is a brief look into the options um, the dash I is an interactive and it prompts before overwriting so if the file exists in the destination directory and you are trying to overwrite it will ask you hey do you want to overwrite you want to happen you want to um, cancel this or skip this file so then you can you can use that particular option to either copy it or to skip it or whichever one that you want to do dash f is the force option which is um, essentially it does not matter whether the file exists um, um, whether it is um, 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 it is preserved whatever it is it basically forces it it will just remove it and then it will try again dash p is the preserve mode where all the ownership the timestamps and all those things are preserved and we will see like what that means like because there is a special section on what is file ownership what kind of um, things that you can do and um, also like what are the modes that you can work on a file and then the dash r is a recursive mode uh, it is a recursive copy uh, um, which means that 
it goes and finds all the subdirectories and subdirectories of subdirectories and then it copies everything. So a copy minus RF is a force and recursive which is used many many times. And then the dash u is the update copy only when the source file is newer than the destination file or if the destination file is missing. So here essentially um, if uh, you already have something new and if, if you are trying to overwrite the previous version it will prevent uh, copying from copying the previous version. So very useful feature. Um, so the CP minus RF is as I said like I mean it is uh, more than what you can imagine in the day to day operations. Uh, now, if you want more details, do you know how to get it? How do you get more details on CP? So there are two ways. We talked about this earlier. One is the man CP. Try that out. See what what you get. And also, like CP dash help, which should give you all these options and what are the different arguments, a short version of that. The man will give you like more details. So now let us move on uh, to the next command. This is MV, MV or uh, we just call it move. The move command is different from CP command because uh, move command basically takes the file and then moves it over to the new destination. So in the Windows world, you can it's analogous to cut and paste, whereas the CP command is more like a copy and paste. So again, the arguments here are the source and the destination, and you can also rename a file, which means that the destination could be specified as a file name rather than a directory name. So if you specify the directory name, the names are preserved, and it just copy it moves over to the the new um, uh, directory. But at the same time, if you specify a new file name as a destination, then it moves it and also changes uh, and renames the file to the name that you wanted that you selected. Again, there are many options. Um, uh, here, there is one one of the options that um, there is mentioned, which is the dash i, which is the interactive, which is um, if it is uh, trying to overwrite a new file, it uh, basically asks you to confirm whether you really want to do it or not. So, again, another nifty feature. Again, um, for getting more help on this command, I want you to. Um, Type in uh, the man move to get more help. Um, so let us uh, go to the next one. The next one is the RM command. Uh, RM stands for remove. So essentially, like you use RM to remove any file. Um, again, you have to use it with. Use it extremely carefully um, unless you want to um, do it, don't do it um, because the deletions are permanent in Linux and Unix. So, once you delete a file, it goes to the, um, the heap and uh, essentially the contents are lost forever. Maybe governments should uh, use this so that uh, you can't trace any of the, any of the files too. Maybe. Anyway. Um, so rm file name that is the command again it has many options rm minus i basically it uh, is interactive where it uh, prompts you before deleting a file um, it asks you hey do you really want to delete this file and it confirms that and then only it deletes rm minus rf is the recursive and force um, as you as we saw so it basically goes and recursively deletes all the files and subdirectories and directories from under any of the 
the, the source uh, or the argument that you specify and uh, rm minus rf also does not prompt when it tries to delete the file so it's it's really a dangerous command if you go to the root and then they say like r minus rf boom everything gone so uh, don't try to do this and then uh, here actually like in fact r minus rf that star the little star here um, this means all the files uh, in fact uh, you can also specify star dot star which is it also means exactly the same thing whether there is a character or not I mean there is a file it just deletes everything so this is the most powerful command I will say in this uh, in any of the Linux platform so do not ever do this one R minus R star if you do it from your home directory the entire home directory is gone if you do it at the root directory the root is gone so uh, I mean there are several mishaps that happen because of uh, using this R minus R star or R minus R star dot star. So now uh, let us look at the, the next command. This is RMDIR or RMDIR. Again, uh, RMDIR is used to remove any directories. So as as you know, as we saw, like RM, just the simple remove command is typically used to remove a file. Even though, like I mean, if you use the RM minus RF, the associated directories can also be removed. But RMDIR specifically removes a directory. So um, here in this example you do an ls of uh, the home directory and see like all these files axi rtl xi rtl zip copy copy star all those things now there is a like a catper and uh, catper one so see the color differences right so um, this OVM reference is green all these TC ragu and spurti copy and all these things are blue and then you have red and then there are black ones so typically the black ones are the ASCII files the red ones here are the uh, binary files and then um, you get the blue ones which are mainly directories and then the green one is uh, some other type that it cannot detect so it basically it is a PDF uh, we know that actually uh, so it is tagged as green. So this is one of the things that uh, some of the shells provide which kind of colorates uh, the various files based on its contents. So it is very easy to see that okay, how many directories are there? Oh, okay, I have CACPR as a directory, uh, CACPR one as a directory, AXI RTL as a directory, OVMTC as a directory, and then uh, Ragu as both you know they have directories. So now I can go and actually remove, let's say, RM the CACPR one, which is this particular directory, and then uh, if you do an ls command, that particular thing is missing. And here you can also say like the OVM TC, but then it comes back with a with a prompt saying that, hey, you are trying to remove a directory which has content in it, which are which has some files in it. So I cannot do this. So that's that's this message, the directory not empty message. Um, so if you want to do it, there are two ways of doing it. One is you can say like RM OVM TC slash star. And then first remove all the files, and then you should R and the OVTC. That's one way to do it. What is the other way? Can anyone guess? It's the RM minus RF. So recursively you go and remove, and that also removes this particular directory. So again, um, Linux actually provides uh, good features to actually um, work on this. Um, to 
for all the commands so that you don't have this one way you can move do it in multiple ways you can be very creative in your approach so now let's go to the next one the next command that we will learn is uh, the pwd pwd stands for present working directory so what does that mean so this is where the prompt is it's almost saying that this is today and um, what is today today is where you are right at this point of time and then uh, so essentially the pwd when you when you say it um, gives you which directory that you are currently working on or where your prompt is okay. so um, again when you are in now flash home we know that actually from uh, uh, the first one uh, and then uh, you have various uh, uh, files we did an ls command so one thing that you notice is also like I mean the uh, 404 this could be a machine name uh, currently like I mean that is what it looks like some shells also display the command number so if you are running the first command then it will say 1 2 3 4 etc in this case it looks like this is a machine CAC 404 so uh, the CAC 404 you go into the home directory you have re removed the CAC 1 they done the ls and then uh, the OBMTC that is uh, this is all like the previous command basically there we try to remove that and then it said basically okay, the directory is not empty I cannot remove it. Now you issue the PWD command basically it comes up with what where it is today where it is currently which is the slash form so that is why you see the slash form here and then um, um, then it continues on. So this is again a very useful command because uh, sometimes the directories can be like very long like you can be under a slash b slash c b c slash d slash e slash f it can go all the way up to like say z and then in the prompt it only displays probably like the z so now you want to understand what is my present working directory so the pwd will give you the exactly where you are okay so this is something like uh, like a gps so now pwd gives you where you are but still you have to know where you want to go and then based on that you can do like cd commands um, ls things like that so so this again a uh, very useful command to keep in mind so now the next command that we'll study is uh, the less command so we saw already uh, the command cat so less is very similar to the cat command uh, in fact we should start with more and then we can say like less um, but more and less are pretty much uh, more or less the same similar type of commands um, the only difference between the cat and the less is in less actually it displays the file but it does not go back to the prompt so it stays within that file and then so it lets you go up and down the file um, and um, the interface is similar to uh, an editor interface even though you cannot edit the file but you can navigate inside the form so if file is too big then uh, it first displays only a portion of it it does not display the whole thing like uh, how the cat does basically it just runs through the thing and then it comes back to the prompt instead of that uh, the less command actually displays the file uh, one page at a time and then it lets you navigate usually you can go forward by just pressing the space bar um, or you can go back by just uh, typing B just pressing B and then each B will go back one page. Um, there are some other additional stuff uh, one is uh, the use of slash to search within the file so you can say slash and then followed by a particular string and then um, 
that's uh, that command will search for that particular string inside the file to see whether it is present where it is present things like that and then uh, for quitting the less you just simply type q and then it will quit uh, there are additional commands inside of less which is uh, one is the percentage uh, command percentage g which takes you to which displays um, um, where what is the uh, current um, percentage or the current line uh, how much percentage of the file is covered by the current line or where exactly the current line is in the, in the file. Um, the lower case G and the upper case G actually they take you to the first character of the file and then the last character or first line of the file and the last line of the file. So upper case G takes you to the last line and lower case G will take it to the first line. So again uh, this is the less command is mainly used for uh, inspection um, and you can also specify like these additional options like dash C will clear the screen before displaying. So um, if there is any residual stuff and it is a small file um, it, you will still like see from the top of the terminal all the way down. And then um, plus n is where n denotes uh, the number of lines. So say like plus ten, it starts printing only from the tenth line onwards. So this is again another uh, thing to inspect files. So you want to actually uh, um, look at a file without actually editing it, touching it. Then the less is your command to do that. Um, again touching is another another thing then when you open a file for reading alone um, you are not changing the timestamp you do not want to say that hey I edited the file it is only read reading if you want to edit the file then as soon as you edit the timestamp changes and then uh, it is uh, a new timestamp will be put in based on when you read the file or when you uh, started reading the file. With the, the right option also. So we, we will talk about some of those things uh, in, the, in the last section where we'll talk about the file system and how to interact with the file system. Now here is an example um, of a less command. So in this one it is a very short file so basically it displays this in the entire screen and then just say end. Um, so now if you Q if you type in Q then this is this window will fit um, you can actually navigate using the G and minus G G and uppercase G that I mentioned and uh, in this file is too small so you can often watch. But uh, if the file goes into multiple pages, then it takes you to the first character and the last character, respectively. Um, um, here, actually, even the, the prompt is missing uh, because uh, I think I can display the whole page, and then basically, um, once you do the queue, then it will display go back to the prompt. Uh, here, it, it doesn't look that uh, interesting, but in reality. Um, if you have a netlist for example you can search through the netlist to find a particular component you can also um, search through timing reports to understand where the maximum delay is things like that. So so again the less command has a lot of usefulness uh, in today's uh, programming um, in, in terms of inspection mostly. Um, Okay, so let's go to the the next one, uh, next command, which is the head. The head displays top part of the file, which is uh, the starting point, and then you can also um, make it display more lines. But the default is ten lines. So it, if you just say like head, and then the file name, it displays the first ten lines in that file. And then the dash n essentially allows you to change the number of lines to be shown. So you can say like uh, dash n four, then it will display the first four lines. If you can, if you uh, so the various options are there. Like uh, so here, 
the example is uh, head dash n50 file dot text displays the first 50 lines of the file dot text head dash 18 file name without the n also it also works it displays the first 18 um, lines of the file so why is this uh, again uh, important uh, the reason is um, the head command is used in many places where you want to make sure that the file is created and uh, the file has all the proper um, input recognized another one is uh, if you know that there is a um, splash bar um, to denote a particular program and you want to know like version from that uh, program itself then you can do a head of uh, that program or the log file and then uh, you know that okay which version it is using um, yeah other ways are basically if you display the first 50 probably that's where all the IOs are all covered so you know exactly like how the what are the IOs that are needed to run the program. Okay, so we will see an example of a head here the Linux text essentially it displays the first 10 lines of that so 7, 8, 9, 10. So you, you can do this uh, many, 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 many different uh, ways essentially. So now a complementary to head is the tail command we will also see this one um, a tail command actually displays uh, 10 lines of a file but it does not display the first line but the last line so the same as head command but only thing is displays the last 10 lines of a file so again why is this important ok we um, will see in a bit and uh, so here also like you can give the same options the dash n and the number or just dash number this changes the number of lines differently and um, there are other options too one of the options that we always use is the dash f option um, the dash f option actually gives on a continuous basis the last 10 lines. So it constantly updates it, it is does not go back to the prompt. So why is this um, important or why do you need this kind of a um, feature because the tail dash f and then the file name it could be a log file and then you can actually track how the program is um, working and how the log file is changing over time. So now you can say like I mean how the program is uh, actually progressing. And then, if you see anything wrong with that, you can put a stop to it um, using Control C. And in fact, to break the tail minus F, you are, you need the Control C to come out of it. Um, the same thing, basically, like you can apply to um, um, the program itself. If you see something wrong in the running of the program, you can put a stop to it. And this is um, it does not change the timestamp on the on the file name. So if the file name is getting written out and you are worried about in the timestamp you you should not worry about it if you are using a tail minus f. So now let us look at uh, how the tail is used uh, in, a, in, a, in a file so here um, we specify tail minus uh, tail just uh, Linux dot text and it displays the content of the um, that particular file but only the last 10 lines so if it has more than 10 lines those lines are already omitted in this uh, example so as I, as I said um, earlier when we talked about the less command um, the command that goes along with the less is what is called the more. So more is very similar to less. It displays the, the files, um, and it is uh, it displays one screen at a time. 
and uh, so again as very similar to go go left that uh, we all know about and again it has many options um the dash c clears the display uh, before actually clear the screen before the display or actual display and then dash n uh, displays the first n line for the file and the plus n displays the lines from that particular n line And then uh, you can also uh, just see um, the the next set of lines, uh, next set of uh, next page full of lines by just pressing enter. It's the same uh, concept basically. In the left, you we pressed uh, the space bar. Here we press enter to advance to the next page. So one use of uh, the more command is uh, shown here. So we do a ls. Ls is the list command. We know about that, and then we know that uh, minus la l stands for the, the long form, and then uh, a is basically all the files, which is includes the dot files. So here you see like the auto. FSK is a dot dot auto mount is a dot file dot CSHRC. It also displays these files which are missing when you just said ls or even ls minus l. So and then uh, it also displays uh, all these things. So here there are a couple of things um, to note in this command. One is the ls minus la which we already learned about, then the slash which is the root directory that we know about. And there is a special character which is the pipe we call it pipe command it is actually a command and then the more so the pipes and t's are something that we will learn later on uh, these are the commands to change the, the, the command flow itself basically so um, here in this uh, one what we are saying by using this pipe is do the ls minus la on this particular directory and send that output to this program and this program is more so it displays your directories page by page so the first page has all these elements then it will say like more so if you press like enter then it will show the next page usually um, the more command exits out when it comes to the end similar to the cat essentially whereas the less will still be inside the program so I think like that is one of the probably the difference between a more and a less but uh, I guess um, this gives you a very good understanding about uh, additional commands we will uh, take up from this point onwards the next time around um, uh, we will go in more deeper into the Linux now now that we understood uh, pretty much the, the basics we will see what do all these characters mean what does this mean what does this mean then here how the uh, date time year extra rep uh, uh, represented um, even like these these things what do they mean so we, we will learn about those kind of things in the next session. So again thank you very much thank you for uh, listening um, again during the next time I will again recap the this uh, particular lecture and then we will continue from that point thanks once again.